All right, we're going to continue with our media availabilities in advance of Sunday's Can-Am 500 here at Phoenix Raceway. We're now joined by Chase Elliott, driver of the number 24 Hooter Chevrolet. Chase, you are currently seventh on the playoffs leaderboard, um, looking to get that final spot in the championship four at Miami. Why don't you just talk about what your approach is this weekend here at Phoenix? Uh, yeah, I mean, our uh, task at hand is pretty simple. We have to win the race to move on next week. Everybody in here knows that. Uh, we know that. And, um, you know, we're going to try to attack the weekend as best we can, you know, hopefully give ourselves a chance to do that Sunday afternoon and and see what happens so i mean that's pretty uh pretty straightforward what we have to do uh with the situation we're in now and it's not the most ideal situation but it um if you were able to pull it off it'd be a lot of momentum mo moving into next week so we're um well, we'll give it our best shot and see what happens all right we're now going to open it up to questions we'll start with jonathan go to claire and then go to kathy jonathan merriman nascar.com chase you just talk a little bit about <clears throat> your confidence level being the fastest in the <clears throat> motorsports car for the past three or four weeks coming in here and, and having to have that that win to make it um yeah i mean i i think that uh you know as being a teammate at, at hms you know we all try to help each other to go fast and we all sit in our meetings and we try to we try to lend information and things that, that'll help all of us obviously when the race starts we're all you know kind of on our own in a lot of ways as to is to try to beat the other three, you know, or, or whoever. You're trying to beat everybody, and, and those three are also in the field. So uh, it's not just about beating them, but, you know, I think that, um, you know, we, we all have work to do, and, and I think that we're, we have the right ideas, and we know the direction we need to go. It's just a matter of executing it and getting there and, and uh, putting an entire race together. It's more than just having fast cars. It's, it's about putting a race together, having, you know, the strategy play your way, uh, some of that stuff you can do really good and some of it you have to be, you know, have to ha kind of have a good day and get lucky with for it to really work out in your favor. Um, so hopefully we can do all those things Sunday and, and it'll work out in ours. And hopefully, um, you know, ho hopefully that'll be the case, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see. We'll go to Claire, Kathy, and then Bob. Claire Beeline, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Uh, this is a crazy race often at Phoenix, and there's a crazy situation, you know, with the cutoff, and one guy gets in if, uh, if there's a win. How far do drivers go? How far, what is your moral compass as far as the end of this race? And surely it's going to get crazy. Well, I think it depends on who's where and, and what the situation is and what guys are racing for what spots. And, you um, know, we've seen that here before. You know, I think if you're in a position that, you know, it's going to help you, I think you've got to be pretty aggressive. I don't, you know, I think there's definitely a line as to how far you, you want to push it. Um, but, you know, if, again, you know, the, the flip side of that is if you're racing for 10th, I'm not going to, you know, put myself in a bad spot to run 9th, you know. So I think it just kind of all depends on where you are and, and what situation you're put in and, and what, uh, what it means to you to have that extra spot. Kathy Brown pitting outside the box. When you're in the race, particularly this weekend, are you going to have anybody on your team reporting back to you where other drivers are? Are you just going to go out and, you know, run your own race, maybe wait to the closing laps? Are you that type of driver? Or do you just want to go out there and not think about it? Um, I don't really, I don't request information like that. You know, typically, you know, if we were on the bubble and we were having to race guys, sure, they would let me know, hey, you know, either, you're either in or out. Um, and obviously moving forward means you're going to be closer to being in and moving backwards mean, means you're going to be closer to being out. But, you know, for us, it, it's pretty simple. You either win or, or we're not a part of the, the four next week. So, you know, that, the points calcula uh, calculations this week are really irrelevant to us. And um, they're, they're not to a lot of other guys, but, but to us they are. So it uh, sounds simple, just a matter of, matter of going to do it. We'll go to Bob. Bob Pockers, ESPN. Can you compare the stress and the pressure of what your what, of your situation now versus leading late in the Daytona 500? Whether wondering whether you're going to run out of fuel. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, it, it seems like the Daytona 500 was yesterday. We were just talking about this this morning and just how fast this year's gone by. But um, I would say similar. You know, I, I I think it's definitely similar. You know, being you know, leading the leading the closing laps of that race, not really knowing what was going to happen, and, and having a shot to win uh, the Daytona 500. I mean, um, obviously one of our biggest events. I mean, that 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 could have been a huge day. Um, 
but also right now is an important part of our season. You know, a championship is, is huge, and uh, being able to race for one is, is a, an opportunity any driver would want. So um, fortunate to currently have had opportunities to do both and, and have an opportunity to, to compete for a championship, still do have an opportunity. It's more than I could say a year ago. So, um, you know, although some disappointments there, there at Daytona were definitely there, and there's nothing I can do about that now. We still have a chance to go to Homestead next week, and, and we'll uh, try our best to do that. Do we have any additional questions for Chase? Up here to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Chase, it's often human nature to think what if. Um, for somebody like you, yourself who says, you know, you're in a position where you've got to win, that's something you haven't done yet at this level, you've come so close so many times this year how tough is it to to not think what if in, in terms of could have scored a win what how things might have been different i mean well it, you know you can play the game i guess of what ifs but unfortunately you know for our circumstances you know we don't this is a this is a sport of do's and don'ts and we have not and i've said that before and it's just the facts um you know what happened last week it has you know, or, or a month ago or beginning of the season or having an opportunity to win and not, you know, it's nothing that you can change now. I think you just have to understand whatever position that you were in and, and hope that uh, you learn something from that, that experience to know that if you're ever in that position again, you can change the outcome. And I think, uh, sure, there's disappointments that have come along with that and uh, with that learning curve. But, you know, I think that you just have to understand that you can't change it and you hope that you can change the outcome the next time it rolls around if it ever does. We'll go back to Bob and then up here to Lee. Bob Parker's ESPN. From your experience last year and experience this year, how much, if at all, did the racing change once you got to the playoffs? And did that was that surprising to you or any different than just go, seeing the intensity from going from Xfinity to Cup? Yeah, definitely different from Xfinity to Cup. Um, you know, my, my two years in Xfinity, you know, as you know, the point system was different than what it is now. So we, we were racing for an entire season's worth of points. So uh, completely different ball game than what we have to work with on this level. Uh, my first year in Cup was the first chance I had to ever work with a reset or work with a reset in points towards the end of the year. So um, definitely different for sure. The intensity picks up, I can definitely say, I think is the, is the playoff start. And, you know, I think teams pick up intensity. Teams are pushing things harder with the cars. Uh, guys are, you know, less lenient on track to, to certain situations, which as they should be. I mean, we're all, we're all trying really hard. So um, I, I think it's expected and it's definitely there. So I, I can agree with you. I think the intensity picks up and I think it, you know, increases as the weeks roll along and depending upon what situation you're in with points and, and how you stack up, it can be either more or less intensified for you uh, and your team. Is it something that like you and Ryan Blaney and like, young guys have to get used to or adjust to? Uh, I, you know, I don't think so. I mean, it's, uh, it's the same for everybody. And I guess fortunately for me, I've it, it, while being in cup, I've never really been used to anything else. So it's kind of what I what I've always seen. So I don't I don't necessarily think so. I've I've watched it on TV for years with the old three set with ten to go. So um, it's nothing that's so new that you don't understand or you're you're not uh, you're not at least thinking about. So no, I think for me, you know, I've always um, my, my two years here have, have been a part of it and um, have seen it the way it currently sits and. I think that's probably the best thing about you know being new to something is you don't necessarily know an old way. Go to Lee. To kind of follow up on that, um, what lessons have you learned throughout this year, throughout your first entry into the playoffs that you'll take and be even better next time so you're really not in this crunch kind of situation? Well, this is my second time in the playoffs. Um, but, you know, I, I do think that I learned – Learned some things last year. Uh, you know, like I said a minute ago, we're still a part of it right now, and that's more than I could say a year ago. So I think we have gotten better from that standpoint. I think we've run these last, you know, eight weeks probably better than we've run the entire season. Um, 
so I, I think that's that's encouraging to know that we have the kind of pace that it takes to go and compete for wins. We have the kind of execution. We have the pit stops, and we have all the things that it takes for it to happen. Um, it hasn't, but it, it, I think we had the things that, that it takes to do so. So um, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned is, you know, I look at last year, and I think there was a lot of opportunity last year. We had a, a great car at Charlotte to advance uh, on the, there in that race. Ended up getting in a wreck. So I looked at last season and just saw a lot of missed opportunity. And, and uh, you know, I kind of look at the beginning of these playoffs the same way. You know, throughout the first eight weeks, we, we've missed some great opportunities that, that were there to help us move forward. So um, I've learned a lot. I've also learned that I don't want to miss out on those opportunities moving forward. And, and obviously, I'm going to try everything I can do to, to not, you know, if you ever have the chances uh, down the road. Any final questions for Chase? Chris? Uh, Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Chase, no matter what happens on Sunday, is there going to be any satisfaction to know that you've had a solid season and something to, to build on for 2018? Uh, that's tough because, you know, the opportunities we've had, as, as I said a second ago, over these first eight weeks were tremendous. And, um, you know, it, it, it'd be disappointing to not make it for sure, to know how we've run in the playoffs and to know that we have competed with, with some of the guys that have made it in. Um, you know, or, or are currently working their way in for a lot of the season. And have, you know, we've run with them at a lot of the races. Um, they, they've won more races than us, but we've run with them a lot of the times throughout the season. So I think that's pretty disappointing uh, if, if you don't make it to know that much. But um, there has been some solid, solid pieces to the season, but I don't think it would be satisfying if we, if we leave here not a part of it next week to know that we've run like we have these last eight weeks and to not be a part of the show. All right, Chase, thanks for joining us. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks.